This video is going to review how to sketch the graphs of y equals sine theta and y equals cosine theta uh, using degrees. So this is stuff you've already done before, but just before we get into graphing the primary trigonometric functions using radians, uh, I want to go back and do a, a quick review of how to graph using degrees first. Okay. Now, if you recall, uh, the graph of y equals sine theta uh, between 0 and 360 degrees has five key points. We would consider those five key points to be when we have degree values of 0, 90, 180, 270, and 360 degrees. So for y equals sine theta, uh, sine of 0 degrees is 0, sine of 90 degrees is 1, sine of 180 degrees is 0, and sine of 270 degrees is negative 1, and sine of 360, that's when we've rotated a full circle and come back to where 0 degrees is located, and so that would be 0 as well. In order to fill in the rest of the table, uh, we notice that we're working with related acute angles of either 30, 45, or 60 degrees, and so those would be based on our special triangles. So one of our special triangles has the angles 30 degrees, 60 degrees. Opposite the 30 degrees is the shorter side. Uh, now I haven't drawn this diagram to scale, uh, but this would be the side length of 1. Opposite 60 degrees is the longer side, so that's root 3, and the hypotenuse is 2. So we can check using Pythagorean theorem that, that those side lengths work. So the sine of 30 degrees would be opposite over hypotenuse, or 1 over 2, which is... 0.5. For 60 degrees, the sine ratio would be root 3 over 2, which equals about 0 0.866. For 45 degrees, we can draw our other special triangle, which has two 45 degree angles. Uh, the leg lengths of the triangles, so the sides that join at the 90 degree angle, are 1 and the hypotenuse is root 2. And so the sine of 45 degrees is equal to 1 over root 2, which equals about 0 0.707. Okay. Now, these are angles in quadrant 1, whereas this next set is all in quadrant 2. In quadrant 2, we know the sine ratio is positive. Quadrant 1, all of the ratios are positive. Quadrant 3, only the tangent is positive. And quadrant 4, only the cosine is positive. Okay, so we know that our ratios here are still going to be positive, but the ratios will be uh, dependent on what the ratio is for the related acute. So 120 degrees, if we were to draw that on the Cartesian plane, would be located in quadrant 2. So that's 120 degrees. The related acute angle, well, 120 plus 60 would give us 180. So the related acute angle for this is 60 degrees. And the sine ratio for 60 degrees was 0 0.866. And we know that ratio is going to remain positive because we're in quadrant 2 and the sine ratio is positive. Similarly, for 135 degrees, that has a related acute angle of 45 degrees, and so we look for the ratio at 45 degrees, and that was 0 0.707, and again, the sine ratio is positive because we're in quadrant 2, and for 150 degrees, we've got a related acute angle of 30, and so the ratio for 30 degrees was 0 0.5, and again, it remains positive because we're in quadrant 2. In quadrant 3, same thing, we're going to look for what the related acute angle is, but we know that these ratios will be negative because the sine ratio is negative in quadrant 3. So for 210, that has a related acute angle of 30, 225 has a related acute of 45, and 240 has a related acute of 60 degrees. So for the sine of 210 degrees, we know it's going to be the same as the sine of 30 degrees, which is 0 0.5, except for the fact that it's negative. 
this one's going to be the same as the sine of 45, so 0 0.707, again, except for the fact that it's negative. And here we want the sine of 60, which is 0 0.866, but negative because we're in quadrant 3. Okay. Similarly, in quadrant 4, we're going to get ratios of negative 0 0.866, negative 0 0.707, and negative 0 0.5. Now, if we were to sketch all these points on our graph, it would form the graph of the function y equals sine theta. Uh, so, if we want just a quick sketch of the graph, we could just focus on the five key points that are here between 0 and 360 degrees. If we needed a more exact uh, graph, then we could also plot the points that are in between. So, for the, for the purposes of this, let's plot all of these as key points on our graph. We want to figure out an appropriate scale for our x and y axis. Uh, so it looks like for our x axis, there's 24 spaces going across, uh, which for 360 degrees, that means we can have each space being 15 degrees. So every other one is going to represent an increase of 30 degrees. So this is, so this one is 30 degrees, then two more is 60 degrees, and so on. until we get to 360 degrees. And for our y-axis, our positive y value is 1, and our, uh, sorry, our highest y value is 1, and our lowest y value is negative 1. So I'm going to put 1 up at the top here, and negative 1 down at the bottom. Okay. So now, plotting our key points, sine of 0, is 0. Sine of 30 degrees is 0. 0.5, so it's going to be halfway between here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So there's a point there. Sine of 45, well 45 is going to, going to occur halfway between 30 and 60. So that's at just over 0. 0.7. Uh, sine of 60 is 0. 0.866. Sine of 90 is 1, and we're going to continue to plot all the key points like that. And finally, we want to draw a smooth curve through all of those key points. Okay. So this gives us the graph of the function y equals sine theta for theta values from 0 up to 360 degrees. If you pause the video now, you can fill in your worksheet uh, for the second, uh, second row of this table. Uh, you can fill in the values for cosine theta for each of these theta values in degrees and draw those key points on the graph. Uh, so if you pause the video now, you can complete that and then if you restart the video, the solutions for the cosine curve will be shown. Okay, so here's the cosine curve. And again, notice some similarities between the cosine curve and the sine curve. Um, the cosine curve, though, we know is going to be positive only for quadrant 1 and quadrant 4. So you'll see the positive values there. And again, we can see that on our graph. If we were to split up our graph into the four quadrants, we can clearly see on the graph of y equals cosine theta that the graph will be negative or below the theta axis for quadrants 2 and 3. And cosine theta will be above the theta axis for quadrants 1 and 4, just like the cast rule says. 